Welcome back, friends. Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. Today, I'm answering a question from one of you, which reminds me, if you want to ask me a question, there are a couple different ways that you can do so. You can email me at danvega at gmail.com. You can respond to one of these videos. You can send me a DM over on Twitter at the real Dan Vega. Now, I am trying to find a better way to wrangle all of these messages into one place so I don't lose sight of them. So if I don't get back to you right away, I apologize. Email probably is the best way to get a hold of me. So I want to dive right into this question. It says, hi, Dan. How are you? I'm not going to waste your time, so let's dive right in. I need to learn how to actually build something with the Spring MVC framework. I'm not good with Java, or at least I believe productivity will be increased if I use Groovy. Is it doable to mix Groovy with an already existing Java code base and run it with Groovy? So the answer, short answer is yes. Long answer is uh, let's talk about that. So from a perspective of I'm not good with Java, or I believe productivity will be increased with Groovy. I need to start off by saying I am a huge fan of Groovy. I've been using it for like 10 years. haven't been using it lately, but I started using it 10 years because of that. I believed that my productivity would be increased using Groovy, and it was. And uh, it was just easier to use um, a dynamic language. It had a bunch of dynamic features. Uh, you can do things like type inference and not have to declare uh, static type for it. You can do things like uh, metaprogramming, uh, a whole bunch of really great features. I think one of the biggest things were like builders for me. So I want to build some HTML, build some markup. The builders in Groovy were great. But that was 10 years ago. And I, I think you know, from a personal perspective, Java has caught up. Java changed. You know, Lambdas was another big thing that was in Groovy that wasn't in Java. And then, of course, Java 8 introduced Lambdas. So over the years, Java has kind of caught up to Groovy. And I think the six-month cadence uh, that Java changed to, being able to introduce new features every six months, is really helped out the Java programming language. So as much as I love Groovy, I don't reach for it anymore. I believe that Java is there. There's no reason for me to, to kind of reach for Groovy, but man, I have a soft spot in my heart for Groovy. I love it. So if you want to continue to use Groovy, I'm not going to discourage you from that. I don't know how much productivity is going to be increased by reaching for Groovy, but if you love the language, I'm not going to stop you from using it. Now, I will say it really depends on the code base, right? If it's like, if it's your code base and you want to use Groovy, great. If you're one of a team of 20 and 19 people are using Java and you want to introduce Groovy just so that you can introduce Groovy and use it, maybe that's not the best solution. I will say that I think learning Java is probably your best route. But if you can learn Java through introducing Groovy, I'm, I'm all for that too. I, I've done a bunch of that myself. So um, I think I would really encourage you to, to get better with Java, but today we're mm -hmm. going to talk about adding Groovy to, to that project. Now, we're going to do this a couple of ways. I'm going to have over to start.spring.io. We're going to create a new project using Groovy, and I want to look at the bits that are in there. How does this actually happen? So we'll do an example like that, and then I'll take an existing Spring MVC app that was using Java, and we'll see how we can add Groovy to it. So I've also been getting a lot of requests for Kotlin examples. I am not a Kotlin person. I don't use Kotlin. I'm interested from you. Do you use Kotlin? Do you use Groovy? Let me know in the comments below. If you think you would like to see me start producing more spring-based tutorials using another language like Groovy or Kotlin, let me know. I'm still trying to figure out why I should learn Kotlin. So if you have some of those tips too, uh, let me know in the comments below. With that, hey, let's stop talking, Dan. Let's write some code. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start here over at start.spring.io. We're going to create a new project. We are going to use Maven. I'm going to select Groovy as the programming language. Again, you can use something like Groovy. You can use Kotlin. I'm going to choose Groovy here, and we're going to pick the latest uh, release candidate of Spring Boot 3.2. doesn't really matter for this example, though. So I'm going to say dev.danvega. We're going to call this hello Groovy. We are going to use Java 17, I guess is fine. And all I'm going to do is build a web project. Uh, we're going to keep this very simple today. It's really more about Groovy than it is whatever we're building. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and generate this project. It's going to create a uh, download for me, a zip file. I'm going to open this up in my favorite IDE, which is IntelliJ Ultimate. You can open it up in whatever text editor ID you're most productive in. With that, let's write some code. All right, to run this example, you will need Groovy installed. I have Groovy installed. I'm running the latest version, which currently is 4.0.15, and I have that configured in my IDE. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into source main Groovy. So this is usually source main Java. We have a source main Groovy directory. And if we look at our pom.xml, we see that we are running Java 17. We have Spring Boot Starter Web. Another dependency we have now is a Groovy dependency. Now, again, the version of that is um, defined in the Spring Boot Starter parent in the dependencies bomb. Uh, so we don't have to declare a version there. Now here's what's different. If we go down here, we have a plugin for org.codehost.gmaven plus, and this is what adds all of the goals for being able to do things like compile, run tests, uh, add sources, all of the things that you need to do in a Groovy project. So it is looking in this Groovy uh, directory and then in the main package for our files. So now you see we have a Groovy file here. Uh, you see we don't have things like public. This is not public static void main. Um, and we're not returning anything. We're just running something. So this is our main uh, Groovy class. So what I want to do here is actually create a new controller in Groovy. So let's say uh, new uh, Groovy class. And we'll go ahead and call this our home controller. And we're just going to mark this as a REST controller. And now we need to define a method in here. I'll call this, uh, this will be a git mapping. So this will be to the root. And then in Groovy, uh, we don't need to define the return type. We can say, uh, I don't know what, whatever, we're going to use type inference here. Whatever that returns, that's the return type. So I'm going to say, uh, let's call this home. And then we see uh, we don't need to use the return keyword here uh, because this is implied in Groovy. So I'll say hello Groovy, uh, semicolon, don't need that either. Uh, so that is our main method. So if we were to go ahead and run this application, uh, we would have an endpoint uh, at the root. And actually, let's just go ahead and do that. And I think what I'll do is I'll just fire up a quick terminal. So if I come into terminal and I run HTTP IE at 8080, uh, we should just see hello Groovy. Great. So that's working. Now in this scenario, you can run Java classes right next to it. We don't need to create a separate directory structure, any of that. Um, I can come in here and say new Java class, and maybe I'll call this the um, post controller. Uh, this will be a REST controller. We'll say, let's create a new get mapping for slash posts. This will return a list of string. We'll call find all posts. And then in here, we do have to return uh, some type of list. That looks good. Let's go ahead and try and run this again. And now both the uh, home endpoint, so the one we did before, that should still work. And now we should have one at slash posts, and that returns our list of strings. So this is one approach. We can go ahead and uh, add Groovy files, add Java files. If you're starting off and you just start a new project, this is the way to go. Uh, then both teams could be happy uh, mixing Groovy and Java together. So this is a good start. Now let's take a look at a, a scenario where we're starting with a Java project. All right, so here we are in a new project. This is a Spring MVC web-based application that is using Java. So if we notice, uh, this is the application.java file. If we look in our POM file, we're no longer listing Groovy as a dependency, and we don't have that other build plugin. So let's just say this was the application that your team was working on and you wanted to add Groovy to it. Let's figure out how to do that. So what I want to do is go back to the Spring Initializer. We have this great little feature here that we're using the same project from before. If I go into Explore, I can see what code is uh, going to be generated from there. So now I can come in and just say, oh, let me copy that dependency that I would have used here. So in here, I'll just kind of paste that in. And then I know that I also need this plugin. So I'm just going to copy uh, this plugin code here. So if I do that and I come into plugins and then I paste this in, now I can go ahead and refresh Maven and we should be good to go here. So what I want to do now is under source main, I need to create a new directory called Groovy. So this is where my Groovy code is going to go. This is where my Java code is going to go. So it doesn't work exactly the same as the Groovy app where you can kind of put Groovy and Java code next to each other. The way that the plugin is doing, looking, it's looking for uh, source code in a directory called source main Groovy. 
So we can put some code in here, but there's some things we gotta keep in mind here. We can't just create a new Groovy class in here. We need a package structure, and it would make sense to us to mirror the package structure of our Java application. So I'm gonna come in here and create a new package called dev.danvega.javagroovy, and in here, I can go ahead and create a new controller that is a Groovy class. So I'll say home controller.groovy, so that's already there. Again, we'll just say, hey, this is a REST controller inside of here. This is going to be a Git mapping. And we can just do the same thing. Home, we're going to return hello Groovy. Okay, this is going to work. I'm not going to run it. Take my word for it. Now, this works because we're in the same packet structure. structure. And the way that Spring works, right, it knows what packages to kind of scan for and look for uh, different components, whether it's a component, a controller, a REST controller, a service, repository, etc. So if this is not in the same package structure, let's just play with that for a minute. Let's say that we did this in com.foo. And if we move this into here, if we go ahead and try to run this application right now and head over to our handy dandy ter terminal here and say HTTP 8080, um, that's not found. We, uh, what, what is going on? Why is that route not found? And it's because this particular class that we've marked with an at rest controller is not getting picked up because it's not in the same package. So whenever I'm in a Java application, Groovy application, I'm putting all of my source code, my components, my configuration, I'm putting that on the same package next to the main application class. And nothing is different here. Now, if you don't do it that way, there is a solution. You could come in here and say, hey, I need to scan some other packages. Um, and in this case, I want to look for dev. Actually, let's change this. So let's say I want to look under com.foo. So now if we go ahead and rerun this, now when we do some scanning for uh, components, we should go ahead and find that one. If we do that, um, there it works now. So this is a way that you can do this. This is a Java class. This is a Groovy class. Uh, let's just put this back here um, just so that we have it in the right place. This is a Groovy class. And in this particular code base in Spring MVC, we are using both Java and Groovy. Because remember, at the end of the day, Groovy just compiles down to class files anyway that run on the JVM. So, here we are. So that was exciting. I thought that was a fun question. I thought it was a great question. And again, if you have questions like this, there are a couple different ways you can do this. My contact information is below. It's also something that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. This is also a great time to uh, come over to Spring Office Hours. Head over to springofficehours.io. This is a weekly podcast that me and Deshaun do, and we have an opportunity to answer questions like this so you can get your questions in there. So, hey, I hope you learned something new today. A big fan of Groovy. I have been for a long time. Um, thinking about diving into Kotlin as well, so let me know your thoughts on all of that. But, hey, if you learned something new today and you got some value out of this, do me a big favor, friends. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.